Um, hey, Oliver, how are you today? Nice to meet you. Well, thank you. Nice to meet you too. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Uh, congratulations on the film. It's, it's quite powerful and very wonderful. And I want to ask you first off, this was based on a memoir and a book that was presented to you. How did it get on your radar? And then after you read it, you went, yeah, I think I would like to see this as a, in a film version. How did that all come about? Uh, it was literally, I got an email from a bunch of producers based in London uh, who were flying to South Africa to meet with me to talk about it. Uh, and that's what we did. We spoke about it and I read it. Um, in the beginning, I actually was sort of not really partial to it because I didn't, I, I think I was just sort of, I felt like it was beyond me. I, I didn't go to the military. I'm too young. I'm the wrong race. It was all, everything about it was kind of just far away. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of thought maybe that's the reason to make it. Um, and and I was promised, which which was exactly what happened. We were given a lot of time to develop it and to to really just nuance the story. Um, and then it kind of all went very quickly all of a sudden. And it was kind of shooting. <laughs> but it, in fact, it took five years, but it didn't feel like five years. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I was going to say it was a long process to get it off the ground. But what ultimate, you know, there's a lot going on here, Oliver, Do, you know, it's the sexuality, the military, you're covering a lot, uh, apartheid, there's a lot of, you know, what ultimately scared you before you started this? <laughs> um, I think it's, I mean, from a full making point of view, I suppose it was the fear of making a military film because there are many and there are tropes and there are good ones and there are bad ones. And yeah. I think I was kind of nervous about getting it wrong or, or, or repeating myself. Um, so yeah, the, the world itself was scary to me, this military context and as a, in terms of the filmmaking, you know, action sequences and all those kinds of things, not really what I've done in the past. So from that, from that point of view, I was a little bit frightened. Yeah. All the hard stuff, like the racism stuff I'd done before. So I was like, those are all the things I'm used to, but these right. the yeah. elements of the setting was kind of frightening to me. Yeah, I think it's good to be scared. Sometimes it pushes you to, you know, to do your best. And then of course you have to get this you know, tremendous group of young actors. Um, many who, of course, we don't even know here in North America, you know, and or it's their first first gig. And so what I'm wondering is when you got them together, finally, after they were all cast and everything, they weren't even born during this time period. Yeah. So yeah. What, what was the preparation like to kind of get them in the mode? Uh, interestingly, you know, their biggest resource was, was their own fathers because all their fathers had gone to the military, every single one of them. Uh, and I encouraged them to talk to their fathers and many, almost all of them, their fathers had never spoken about their time in the, in the army. So this was a really interesting demand from a director to force their fathers into it as well. Um, yeah. and, and then I just sort of did the sort of obvious other things like boot camps and uh, I produced books for them that kind of gave them a bit of context of what life was like in 1981 in South Africa, like reminded them of what a car looked like in 81 and what the money looked like because everything in South Africa changed in 94, currency changed, the money changed, like it all just, so I had to kind of provide them with this like quick kind of guide to, to what the world looked like for, for them. The last page of that book, it was a picture of Nelson Mandela and it said, this is what a terrorist looks like. Wow. Wow. They, all, they all grew up with Mandela as kind of like, you know, the, the, the rainbow, the like rainbow nation father. Yes. yes, it's so interesting. I find it so fascinating. And then, of course, you, you chose to call, you know, to title the film Mafi, which is a derogatory term in South Africa. Uh, it's, it's terrible. When I went, first looked it up, I had no idea. Um, you know, here in Canada, we would never, I mean, I would never think, you know, that why would you decide? I was, I was wondering why you decided to actually call it this and what the reaction was in South Africa when you did. I mean, it really packs a punch. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 was, I was very nervous about calling it Morphe. The producers were always very confident because the book was called Morphe and they just felt that that was like the strongest title, but they were from, they're from England. So they just also didn't kind of register what I was registering and I was very nervous. And I think it's, I would say it came to a head when the film was released in South Africa and there were billboards and highways across the country that just said Morphe and people were calling into radio stations and kind of going nuts because it just felt, it was just, you know, this word that you're not supposed to say or consider is sort of everywhere. It was like outside of airports, it was in lobbies and right. uh, we kind of just like took the word and just reclaimed it in a very aggressive way. And I, and I think it's, it's, it's been a good experience. I, 
value uh, our energy in making in using the word as a provocation to kind of speak to the subtext of the story, which is this weapon of shame being deactivated. Yeah, yeah, fascinating. I just was curious, you know, at the end of the day, after making a film like this, like you said, you've done other films before, but working on this, I would suspect that this would, in a way, maybe change you or maybe think about life in a different way. Did, did it, did, you know, after all, it was all said and done, did you feel kind of a sense of change about yourself? Um, I yes, I suppose in a way, it was cathartic in a way. I remember in the preparation for this film, I kept asking all my friends what their relationship with the word mafia had been like. And just, it actually, by doing the research for this film, I learned a lot about the people in my life and their relationship, even my brother. Yeah. Um, so in that way, it did become deeply personal. Um, but also it makes me, it made me look at a lot of people, a lot of men who are that generation that went to the army, who are friends of mine or colleagues of mine. It made me understand them in a, in a far more, uh, complex and nuanced way. Yeah, yeah. I had the opportunity to talk to Kai a little earlier, who plays Nicholas, of course. He's so good. I, I, you know, you wouldn't think that he'd never done anything before this, really. And, he, you know, I found it extraordinary. He said he went through 11 auditions and it wasn't even for that role. And then, you know, he finally got Nicholas. What was it about him? How did you know that he was going to be able to carry this? That was always the sort of challenge was, you know, looking for somebody who could sort of un carry the complexity of the character without having much dialogue um, yes. and actually what sold us on Kai was that my like the producer was in town from London and I said to him there's an actor we've saw we've seen 11 times but he's actually on stage tonight doing Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime and he was doing the lead and I just took yeah. the producer to see that and kind of an intermission on that night we kind of was sort of seeing Kai carry that performance we felt very confident that he could do this. Yeah, that's a strong part, no question about it. I mean, he's, yeah, I, I would have probably picked him too, having seen him in that. Well, you could listen, have, you could have, you could have yeah. saved the edition for just on that. But I mean, exactly, listen, you couldn't let him sweat it out a little, right? Come on, you can't hand, put, had him on a silver platter. Congratulations on the film. It really is extraordinary and very eye-opening and I uh, just wish you best of luck with it uh, across the world. And uh, thank you for your time today, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye, Oliver. Bye, everybody.